Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in Winning Cures Everything. The Tuesday night college football playoff ranking reaction show. This is after week number 12. It is November the 5th. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And we got a lot to discuss here. And we're, we're going to try not to uh, to keep everybody for too, too long. But, man, this was uh, this was interesting, to say the least, right? Am I, I'm not crazy for that, I don't no, think. Not, oh, it's definitely interesting. Interesting is a good, good word for it. So, we're going to take this entire top 25 from number 25 on up, and we're going to break it into increments of five. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Got six wonderful sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us at winningcureseverything.com. Go enter our football picks contest. You can win great prizes from Tunica. They are wonderful, I promise. And it's super easy to get into this thing. So go put your picks in. It's free to enter. Uh, everybody wins a prize every week. Well, not everybody. The winner wins a prize every week. Every week. So, go uh, go check that out. Of course, you can find all of our stuff over there. Uh, our social media platforms, our podcasts, our videos, our picks, everything is right there. So, winningcureseverything.com. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. If you're on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave some comments. Tell us what you think about this top 25. Let's, uh, let's fire in. Number 25, SMU. That makes sense. Uh, Let's just I, give all five. Let's give all okay, five. number 25, SMU. Number 24, Navy. Number 23, Oklahoma State. Number 22, Boise State. Number 21, Memphis. So, let's go ahead and, and SMU. We, we compare this to the Massey Composite ranking. The Massey Composite has to do with advanced statistics. And this is from a ton of different... Um, I will assure you, nobody in the room that made this decision, and I mean... Not one person out of whoever the hell makes up this committee knows anything about this or advanced statistics. You you might be right about that. I bet some of them know some advanced statistics. I, I, I bet I bet zero. I bet it's zero. Whew. I don't know if that's right. We need to uh, we need to get a different committee in. But there. think about the people that make up the committee: senators, congressmen, former coaches, coaches, eighties, coaches yeah. hate this shit. Well, some do. All, uh, but the older ones all definitely All the do. former coaches that are unemployed yeah, you might, right now hate it. All the ones that love it, guess what? They all have jobs. You got a point. You got a point. All right. Uh, number 25, SMU. At the Massey Composite, they are number 22. So that, that kind of makes sense. I, I, I think they should be higher. So I'd, I, anywhere in that top 25 is fine. If they had left them out, I think that would have been a big problem. They got them at 25. Okay. okay. You know, whatever. Uh, SMU has looked kind of bad against some not good teams. That's fine. So, but they, but they are they finding ways to win. They undefeated, except for the fact that they ran into an absolute buzzsaw in Memphis. Last now you got that right. Uh, Twenty-four Navy. Uh, Navy is actually, let's see, in the Massey Composite. Good they gotta, gracious! They got to be far lower than SMU. I mean, they they may be way down there. Hold that, on. That is a that is a nod to the military academies, and that's all this is. Because well, I mean, SMU. Navy is seven and one right now. Their they're only not, loss not bad. Only loss was a weeknight game at Memphis. Yes, but I'm, but I'm telling you, if if them and SMU have the same loss, SMU's been far better oh, than them throughout the year. Navy's number twenty one at the Massey Composite. That's that's why. Wow, I was that shocks it. me that they're yeah. one better than them. They uh, I mean, they got some good wins. They've got some really good wins okay. so far. They they've been kind of steamrolling teams. Number twenty three, Oklahoma State is number twenty five in the Massey Composite. So, yeah, right around there. Boise State is uh, number 22. They are 24 at the Massey Composite. And Memphis is number 21 in the college football playoff ranking. And they are number 17 at the Massey Composite. Yeah, I'd, so, have, I'd have Memphis higher as well. I, I was a little shocked by that. Uh, more than likely should be undefeated. Yes. You know, well, that, that Temple a, game. They ran into a crazy game in Temple. Yeah. And, and when you turn the football over, like it, I don't know that you deserve to win when you turn the ball over That's four right. times on the road. Temple, so Temple won that game. Temple absolutely won the game. Let's move into the next five. Number 20, Cincy. Number 19, Wake Forest. Number 18, Iowa. Number 17, undefeated Minnesota. Number 16, Kansas State. So number 20, Cincinnati, is at number 16 in the Massey Composite. 
since he's only lost a beat down to the committee's number one team, Ohio State. I cannot um, believe Cincinnati is this low. It, other than, I mean, they've got the win over UCF, uh, who is, let's see, where is Central Florida? I mean, it, I don't think the Magic Composite has them high at all. Nope, number 20. UCF is number 20. Fine. they got to be up there. Yep, they are right there. So I just overlooked them again. Uh, other than that, they've got a win over UCLA. They have got a big win uh, at Marshall. They've got a win over Houston, a win over Tulsa, win over East Carolina. Uh, I think they might have been dropped a little bit because that East Carolina game came right down to the wire. That's right. Uh, but you were going to have those sometimes. If, if you're a good team, you just got to make sure that you win them. Win the crap performances. That's right. Just make sure you do that. Number 19, Wake Forest. Uh, I mean, they, you know, a win over North Carolina, win over Utah State, um, a win at Boston College. They don't have a single good win. A they just two, don't. yeah. They, I mean, they. I don't think they would be in the top twenty-five except for the <laughs> fact that they are an ACC school, and they can't have, they can't have Clemson playing nobody in the top twenty-five. I, I think. This yeah, I think is, you're right. I think this is complete. We got to have another ACC school in this, or else it looks really bad for Clemson to even be in the top five. Yeah, I think. I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, Wake Forest is number 26 at the Magic Composite. Number 18, Iowa. Iowa is number 18 at the Magic Composite, so this one matched up almost perfectly. Minnesota, number 17, undefeated Big Ten Minnesota. They play. I'm wondering if the committee is waiting to see what they do against Penn State, because if you go back and look, Minnesota's That's only... That's what this committee's supposed to be doing, though. Well, but it, if you look at what Minnesota has won, Maryland... Rutgers, Nebraska, Purdue, Georgia Southern, which is okay. Fresno State, okay. South Dakota State, good FCS win. But those were the games at the beginning of the season were close. Their only win over a, a Power Five team with a winning record is Illinois, and and they did smoke them. But they they are ranked undefeated, lower than Wisconsin is with two losses. And one of those losses is to the common opponent of Illinois. Yeah. Like, that's the problem I have. Now, I've been blowing Wisconsin all year, and I still like Wisconsin. But I, I absolutely think that a team that is undefeated is better than a two-loss team that one of their losses is to a team that the undefeated team beat the hell out of. I think they are giving Wisconsin a ton of credit for that Michigan win. We'll talk about Wisconsin. That, that is a good win. Now, that's a great win, um, by the way. But, number, number 16, Kansas State. Kansas State is number 23 at the Massey Composite. Uh, of course, metrics are, advanced metrics are not going to like Kansas State a ton. Because of the way they play. Because of the way that they play. But they can absolutely grind a game out. Kansas State has got good wins. I mean, they, they got the win over Oklahoma. That's the uh, best. They destroyed Kansas last week. They got a win over TCU. They lost to Baylor. They lost to Oklahoma State. So both of their losses are top 25 losses. And they do have that massive Oklahoma win to lean on. So, you know. And then, of course, you go on the road and you beat an SEC team, even if it is Mississippi State. I, I think they're ranked probably right where I think I would have them. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. It, they're 23 at the Massey Composite, but 16 here. Let's move into the top 15 now. 15, Notre Dame. 14, Michigan. 13, Wisconsin. 12, Baylor. 11, Auburn. Uh, the biggest surprise here is Baylor yep. is super low, but let, let's talk about Notre Dame. Notre Dame at 15, they are 19 at the Massey Composite. Uh, a big-time loss to Michigan, a close loss at Georgia, both of those on the road. You know, Brian Kelly, obviously not great on the road. It hasn't been his entire career, those but that doesn't matter. Games. Those are incredibly hard games. Yeah, those are tough games. Last year, he was a complete road warrior. I mean, they played in the state of California like six times. Yeah. I mean, they, they weren't playing everybody. great teams, but they well, I mean, but yeah, they still got the wins. That's a, he, he hasn't been. No, they're definitely not that. Now you, you, got, you got that right. Notre Dame, uh, big wins. They beat a ranked, uh, a ranked Virginia team who is not ranked currently. Uh, had to come from behind to beat Virginia Tech last week. That might have been a reason for them being so low. Yeah. But but I think this is about right for them. Okay. You can't have them above Michigan. 
No, you can't have them both mm-hmm. Michigan. And the fact that they're right there with Michigan, I actually think is ranked appropriately. Yeah. Michigan at 14. Of course, you can't have them above Wisconsin because Wisconsin smoked them. But I think at this point in the season, Michigan is like, if you pl- if you replayed that game this weekend, yeah, it's I think you would have a game. vastly different it's outcome. It's a completely different football game. Like, I, I, I don't feel crazy, like, for thinking that. No, no. The fact that Minnesota's below all those teams, I think, is wrong. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I, I think, think I would have... wrong. And the fact that Baylor is this low is a damn shame as well. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about Baylor. Baylor has two top 25 wins. Now, um, how many top 25 wins does Oklahoma have? Uh, that would be... None. Zero. None. They're in the top 10. Yet Baylor's not. Baylor's got two top 25 wins and undefeated. Oklahoma has zero top 25 wins, played hardly nobody. The one top 10, top 25 team they did play, they got beat, and they kind of got handled that whole game. They had to come from behind to make it close at the end of the game. I find that really strange that they're ninth and Baylor is 13th? Uh, ten, 12th, uh, 12th. 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 Yeah, Baylor, uh, you know. Two, I want to know the logic. I just want to know. They they why. beat Iowa State, who is not ranked currently, uh, but is a, a really good team. They hammered Oklahoma State. They hammered Kansas, Kansas State. State. The they beat both of them on the road. On the road. They went on the road. They beat the hell out of two top 25 teams. And another team that's probably really close to the top 25 in Iowa State, they beat them. Yeah, they, they beat Iowa all State by two. Of, I do wonder. All three of those wins, better wins than anything Ohio State, Oklahoma has right now. I, I really wonder if. Um, Texas, I'm sorry. Oklahoma has beaten Texas. Yeah, but they're not ranked in the top 25. No, but they're a good win. They're, they're it's with a, yeah, Iowa it's State. a good win. They're, they're ranked. They're the same win as Iowa State. Um, when I was, they hadn't, they hadn't played uh, Texas yet. This is the same kind of win. It's the same Baylor kind of win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I see. Okay, I see what you're coming from. Uh, Sorry. I do wonder if the West Virginia close win for Baylor, if that maybe it's maybe Baylor. gave them some... I'm telling you, these people look at the name on the front of the jersey. They care about who your granddaddy was. Half these people probably worked for Oklahoma at one point in time or another. I mean, you, yeah, you got a point there. That's why all this is bullshit. Go ahead. Auburn at number 11. That's fine. Uh, oh, as far as the Massey composite, um, let's let's... Reach back. Number 15, Notre Dame, is number 19 in the Massey Composite. Number 14, Michigan, is number... Da, 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 da. I, oh, Michigan is number 12 at oh, the Massey I'm Composite. Saying, I bet they're higher than that. Uh, number 13, Wisconsin, is number 15 at the Massey Composite. Number 12, Baylor, is number 11 at the Massey Composite. And number 11, Auburn, is number 7 at the Massey Composite. So, Auburn, you couldn't have above Florida because Florida beat them. Correct. Florida and Auburn are virtually the same team. They both have two losses yeah. to massive, massive teams. So, they have two bad, two good losses. They also both have a really good win. Yeah, Auburn got a good win over Oregon. And then and then Florida's got the win over Auburn. And, therefore, that's how Auburn, Florida gets ranked over Auburn. Yeah, that so makes we're sense. We're okay with that. We both agree with that. Oklahoma, let's uh, let's move into the top 10. Number 10 is Florida. They are number 13 at the Massey Composite. Number 9, Oklahoma is number 10 at the Massey Composite. Number 8, Utah is number 8 at the Massey Composite. Number 7, Oregon is number 6 at the Massey Composite. And, let's see, number 6, Georgia is number 9 at the Massey Composite. So, so if we're going to knock Minnesota for who they've played and who they've beaten, can we look at Utah's schedule, please? Utah has beaten, and let's uh, let's take this in order: BYU, Northern Illinois, Idaho State, a loss on the road to USC, a win over Washington State, who has not been that great this year, a win over Oregon State, a win over Arizona State at home, a win over Cal, and a win on the road at Washington, who has four losses now. So this team with a loss is better than an undefeated. Baylor team. That's what you're telling me, with two top twenty-five wins. Okay, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out how we got where we got, and and what their logic is. I would just like somebody to explain. I don't have a is, good reasoning. This for is this. why we did this. Like I, I, the because only it's thing, wrong, Gary. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you, but you know they they talk about eye test, right? Like nobody, it, you watch that show more than eye test. 
You you watched that show, and I was hoping that Kirk or or somebody up there, Jesse Palmer, whoever was talking to him, would ask him about like why do you have Baylor this low and Utah this high? That's right. Why is Minnesota and Baylor so low? But Minnesota, teams, I can understand it. Teams with losses are above both of these undefeated teams, and you can't say it's strength of schedule because both of these teams have played the same caliber or not better teams than the teams that Oklahoma, Utah have played. And, and Utah even lost one of them. So yeah, they, I... They have a loss. I just... I, it's the I'm name not, on the front of the jersey. Yeah, but, but I Utah... I just want them to say it, yes. You, well, how is Utah that's the name on the jersey? It, that's a Pac-12 thing. I mean, I they guess they just... Get, they got to get Oregon in, and the only way to get Oregon in is that Utah and Oregon both have to be ranked really high so they can say Oregon has a top 10 win. That's it. It's all politics. Let's, let's talk about Oregon's schedule really quickly. Oregon schedule not terrible. Eh, it's the, it's the questionable. Site, the neutral site game to Auburn is the best. Yeah, that's that's the I best. Mean, they, 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 they have a loss won. to a real team. Had had they won Utah that, Utah has a loss to a bad team. Well, uh, to a team that Oregon just housed by thirty two yes. points. Yes. So they lose to Auburn to start the year. They smoke Nevada, who is terrible. They smoke Montana, who's terrible. Yes. They win at Stanford, who is whatever. Uh, they beat Cal at home. All they beat... of these Pac-12 teams are the same, except for Utah and Oregon. Well, but they they've played the the worst of them, right? Well, like they that's... played Washington. They they played Cal with an injured uh, quarterback. They played Stanford, who was on a third string quarterback, and only six offensive linemen. Who that same team also beat Washington. So whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you got Cal, you got Colorado, who they they housed. They come back to beat Washington. They beat Washington State on a last-second field goal, and then they destroy USC last week. I think that USC win had a lot to do with them being ranked as highly as they are this week well, be, because of the way that they beat I think them. their loss to Auburn is also the same. Yeah. yeah I think you're, uh, you're probably right. Georgia uh, got two good wins. They beat Notre Dame. They beat Florida. They lose the game to South Carolina. Um other than that, Arkansas State, Vanderbilt, Murray State, Tennessee, Kentucky, yeah, whatever. They played two good games. They've beaten both those teams. They got Missouri this week, uh, but they get them at home. Yeah. It, it's kind of a sandwich game between Florida and Auburn. Like we'll we'll see what happens there. If they're looking ahead, they could get caught. We'll see. Let's uh, let's move into the top five. They kept Clemson down at five. This makes me happy. It it appeased uh, a lot of people. I think. But they keep Clemson at five. Clemson's schedule, they beat Georgia Tech. They beat Texas A&M. They beat Syracuse, Charlotte. Last second win over North Carolina. They destroy Florida State. They destroy Louisville. They destroy Boston College. They destroy Wofford. And that's about it. I mean, they, this is what they've got left. NC State, which is the ABC nighttime game. Like, they, it, it's the primetime spot. And but the the reason that that is is Minnesota wanted an eleven a.m. game, and or they wanted a day game on ABC, but they didn't want to compete with Alabama LSU. But they didn't have the rights to any of the other big games, so it was okay. Well, we'll just toss Clemson in there. So Clemson at NC State, Wake Forest at Clemson, Clemson South Carolina. That's where they got left. I'm curious. I don't know what they're going to do with this bunch. So we know it, what they're going to do. They're going to get in because Alabama and Penn State and LSU and Ohio State are all going to play one another. Oh yeah, I mean that's just what's going to happen. So then that moves Clemson in easily because two of those teams are definitely going to have a loss. It's not possible for them not to. No, you're right. So they will move at least to four, if not to three. Number four, they've got Penn State. Uh, Number three, Alabama. Number two, LSU. Number one, Ohio State. I agree with all of those. Um, You'll get no argument from me on the top five. I think I think that's totally fine. I think if you know we worry so much about strength of schedule and all this different kind of stuff, like they use it for some teams but not for others. My problem is the consistency. That's it. Yeah. Why Why is Clemson seen as the fifth best school, but with the resume, Baylor not, or Minnesota? Like that's that's all I'm, and I understand eye test is a big part of this, right? Like that's one of their criteria. Baylor's not beating people by sixty, but they beat the hell out of two top twenty-five teams on the road. Yeah. So what? 
I don't have a good answer for you. Like, okay, you beat Wofford really bad. All right. Oh, let's uh, uh, we'll Massey. Find a nine-year-old here, the shit out of him. Massey Composite. Crown me the champion. All of these were in the top five in the Massey Composite. Correct. They were just in a different order. Uh, Ohio State is number one at both. LSU is number two at both. Penn State, Penn State is number three at the Massey Composite, but number four here. Clemson is number four at Massey Composite, but number five here. Alabama is number five at the Massey Composite, but number three here. So, you know, you got LSU, Alabama this week. You'll have Ohio State, Penn State later on. I, I mean, if Minnesota beats Penn State this weekend. What do you then, do to Penn State? Well, what do you do to Minnesota? I mean, it, it, do you take Minnesota and move them from 17 up to, like, the top five? No, I'm sure they won't. I'm sure they won't. I'm but, sure they won't. But at that point, this Minnesota is, has proven is, just as much. This is why you effed up by putting them so low to begin with. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's and I understand that they wipe the slate clean and go and redo every week, right? But that just that seems dumb to me. Well, these people are dumb, Gary. I know. I know. I just... Ugh. I mean, they're rich a headache. and they're powerful. That doesn't mean they're intelligent. Just a, just an absolute they have, headache. They have massive amounts of influence, but that doesn't make them smart. Now, the it, we'll obviously talk about this in the previews and all that kind of stuff, but Alabama, if Alabama loses, I think they drop further than LSU does. Oh, yeah, LSU won't drop far. I bet LSU doesn't drop below fifth. I think you're probably right. I, get, I think Clemson... And whoever else moves up. And if Penn State loses, then Alabama LSU doesn't even leave the four spot. Yeah, yeah, I think I you're gar- right. I guarantee you that happens. No, I think I think you're probably right. And I'll, I'll hang on now. I bet Alabama if they lose, I bet they don't fall too far, but they'll fall far enough just to not get back in. I believe. I believe, in my opinion, I think people will start to jump them, but I think they would only far past Clemson. I mean, you, you probably Georgia. you probably keep them down at like they're the five fast, spot. They're, yeah, they're going to fall past Georgia. There's a loss to South Carolina at home to a third string quarterback. Yeah, you lose to home to a complete bus all and a team that could feasibly be the number one team in the country. Has the best resume in the country, which I would think like uh, that that can't drop you too far. Like Ohio State plays Maryland this week. If LSU wins at Alabama, they've got to be number one next week, right? Yeah. Oh, at that I, point, you I got do. four top ten wins. Like that, I'm, I'm surprised they're not one now. Well, but they're not. See, this is my team. But no, I'm, but it's I'm not four. It's not four top ten. It's wins. not four it's, top ten teams. It's yeah. not. I know. I know that it was preseason, but Texas is not a top. They're not a top twenty five team. Yeah. But you got three top ten team wins. You will have three. Well, Auburn eleven. Three top eleven wins. That that is a resume builder. And Texas yeah. is still a big win. Just not a top ten win. We got to stop saying that. Yeah, no, you're you're right about that. What you were before anybody played a single snap is meaningless. It's just meaningless. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, that is going to wrap up our college football playoff recap after week number ten on November the fifth. <sighs> Keep these, winning, Baylor. These uh these Give immediate hell, reactions, boys. man. Give them Crazy. hell. Yeah, you you got to get your win at TCU, Minnesota. You want to be taken seriously. Obviously, you got to get your win they, against Penn State this I, week. I don't even think they're going to get credit for that. I just don't. I think they will. You can't have them that far down. I mean, seventeen is pretty nuts. What do they jump to? Fourteen? No, nah, but they 11. move them up to like twelve or eleven. Like I think they'd have them just outside. I mean, honestly, I think they'd probably move them top ten. I think they're just yeah, waiting for it to be proven. Right. I mean, the only win they got is over, or the only, the only win against a, a winning team is against Illinois. I know that their schedule sucks. Clemson sucks too, and Clemson is five. Yeah, but you know why they're five? I test. No, because they won last year. Well, and yeah, we've seen them in the championship last five years, so that's why. But I could give. They should not care what they did last year. I agree. All of these teams are done with last year. I agree. All right, that is our college football playoff ranking wrap-up for week number 10. Of course, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Find everything over there. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave some comments. Tell us what you think. Where do you think these teams should have been ranked? Uh, We would love to hear it. We'd love to hear some kind of reasoning for Minnesota and Baylor being so low and some of these other teams being so high, other than the name on the jersey. That's all we're wanting. We want some consistency. We want something legit. Give us that in the comments. If you're on Apple Podcasts, leave a nice review. Leave us some questions in there. We will uh, we will read it on the air, of course. 
<sighs> Go to tunicatravel.com. Find out about Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. We will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.